Hi, I'm Brian Williams and I'm going to be talking to you today about the CPX105. It comes in a case just like this. It says CP105 on the front of it. Uh, that may be a little bit confusing. You probably did get a CPX if that's what you ordered. This is a CP105. This is just the base model. Uh, it's got a simple pH electrode, uh, very similar to what you're used to. Uh, these modules screw and unscrew. So when you buy a CP version, you can change it out and make yours into a CPX105, which is basically adding a inode IJ uh, pH electrode with temperature compensator uh, onto the end. So if this is what the normal uh, model looks like, let's open it up and see what we got. So what you'll notice immediately is when you compare the two, same body, but with the inode electrode on the end. So I'm going to put this one away to the side. We talk about it in a different video series. CPX105 uh, comes with instruction manual, the meter of course. These storage boots are important. They should stay over the tip of your electrode to keep it from damage and to keep it moist. There always should be uh, a little bit of solution down in the end just to keep it moist if possible. Uh, you'll have some gel electrolyte. We'll get to what that's for here in just a second. And then you'll have an extra tip. Uh, and you'll notice that it also has uh, a little suction cup basically that goes on the end of these. These two pieces, this one right here with the guards and this one right here, they're interchangeable. We'll get to that in a second. But Let's start with the meter itself. When you first get your meter, what you're going to notice is that it's a little bit hazy on the screen, and that doesn't look real nice. Well, all that is is just a little bit of a film that you just peel off, and then you have a nice shiny surface. Once you've done that, your meter is ready to go. Uh, it's already, got a it's already got batteries in it. Uh, they should be 100% uh, go. You'll also have an instruction manual and a warranty card inside of the case. Uh, let you look through those as, as you feel necessary. Before we turn the meter on the first time, one of the first things I always like to check with an IJ electrode, and just so you understand, and there's a, there are videos on this, but uh, IJ stands for Intermediate Junction. And what we're talking about is this piece comes off. Inside of here you have an internal junction. This is the uh, intermediate junction between solution and internal junction. Now what does that really mean for you as the user? Uh, it doesn't mean too much. It means you have a double junction electrode. Uh, it means you have protection from uh, things that might invade, um, things that like silver and like to invade inside of a reference, uh, etc. But as you can see, you'll see it's a little bit wet through uh, next to that glass. That is this gel electrolyte. Uh, let's say that that was a little bit dry in there. Uh, or let's say that you just got through doing something really nasty with your electrode. Or this is the first time that you picked it up. Pop that off, take your electrolyte, and fill this little cavity at the bottom. And when I say it doesn't take much, I mean it doesn't take much. It's just a, it's just a dabble do you kind of situation. That's about it. I mean, I, I don't, I think I used a bubble's worth uh, out of this bottle. That bottle should last you about a year. Uh, even more depending on how often you use your electrode. But you don't have to do this every time. This is a gel electrolyte. Uh, gel electrolytes last a lot longer. This is the only that I'm aware of, the only electrode in the world that has a refillable gel electrolyte. Most all other refillable electrodes use a liquid, meaning that uh, when they put it in, uh, it will proceed out of the electrode at a much higher uh, speed, uh, thereby, thereby meaning that you need to refill the electrolyte more often. With a gel, not necessarily the case. So once we put that in there, we just kind of slowly nudge this back. I do a, a little twist thing until I get it seated. Now, how do you know, popular question, how do you know when it's seated? Uh, once it goes, once your O-ring passes this little black lip, 
seated well enough. Uh, do you want to try and push it as far back as you can? Absolutely. But if it's giving you a little bit of resistance, it's okay. Uh, if you, you know, the next day uh, after using the electrode, you know, you're going to, uh, you'll have a little bit of electrolyte creep, as I call it, coming out of the end next to the glass. Put that in a little bit of water, swish it around, tap that off, and then using the highly analytical uh, piece of paper towel, pat dry, get that solution, you know, get that water out of there best you can and you can see that that excess is gone now um, you're in good shape at this point go ahead and turn it on there's an on button right here once you turn it on it'll cycle through and then it'll pop up and show uh, your pH units now right now it's not measuring anything so it's just going to fluctuate around uh, kind of wherever at random uh, this unit is really nice in that it has an auto calibrator so what I've got for you today is I've got pH 4 and pH 7 buffers. Uh, all you have to do is press and hold the cal button when you go into solution. See I did it and it came up with ERR which is an error. So I'm not in solution right now and so if I press and hold that it's just going to give me an error. Error. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this in my pH 7 solution, drop that down in there, and then I'm going to press and hold my cal button for a few seconds. Now, do you want to take the very first one that you put in at? Uh, you know what? It's probably okay. If it's the first time you've ever used your electrode, you probably want to put it in there, swish it around for a few minutes, uh, give it a little bit of time to stabilize. I, I wouldn't take it right out of the box and right into a calibration and go, eh, you know what, cal, perfect, move on. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of drift if you do that. What I would recommend is you let that sit in that pH 7 buffer, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes at the most. Um, just to give it a little bit of time to, uh, you know, stabilize and adjust itself. Myself, I'm going to go ahead and press and hold cal. And there we go, 7.0. Now, when I'm doing a calibration, you'll notice that I've got yellow liquid still clinging to that body. What I do is I always go over here and go through a uh, distilled water or deionized water uh, rinse. That way I know that I get all that carryover, that trace uh, taken care of, pat it off, and then I will go to my pH 4 buffer. And I'll give it a second. And I'm going to press and hold cow. 4.0. So now that I have completed the two point calibration, because this one auto plugs in those calibration, uh, it now has a built in calibration curve in the meter based on those measurements right there. So when I put this in a pH 7 buffer, it goes to pH 7.0. That looks great. Go over here and rinse that off. Go into a pH 4 buffer. And we have 4.0. Took a little bit longer, just another second or two, to get down to that range. Now, rinse that off, put that away. Uh, when you're done, if you've got a little bit of pH 4 buffer left over, you can always take a little bit of that buffer, put it in this cap, just a dab or two, not a lot, just like a drop or two, into the cap, and use that as a temporary storage solution for this electrode. You don't want to use a lot, just a couple of drops, just to keep that a humid environment inside of that storage cap. Now that we've gone over this end piece, let's go ahead and pop that off. That's how easy it is, folks. On, off. On, off. <laughs> so don't get too stressed out. When it's not in use, you know what? Give it a little clean. 
Doesn't have to be a lot. Stick it back in its, its uh, protective cap. That way you don't lose this. Put it back in the, uh, in the good old uh, carrying case. Now, our alder alternative is the one that we would use for stabbing applications. Now, if I just took this one off, I don't want to just jam this one back on. It's probably got a little bit of electrolyte still inside this cavity and along the tube. But you know what? I always say, you know, putting a little bit more doesn't hurt. So, what we're going to do is we'll, again, fill this cavity. All right. Take this piece, slide it on, give it a little twist, and push. And that's it. So now you see I have electrolyte because uh, I use a little bit too much it seems. Um, but that's okay. Now what you will notice is that this shape gives you complete access to the pH bowl. And it is a spear tip, but don't, don't let that fool you. Uh, this spear tip is just as accurate as 90% um, of the glasses out there. Uh, regardless of its shape, it's a very precise glass. Now, I just changed out to the electrolyte in this, so I want to check the calibration. Put it in, and you know what? I'm a little bit off. Not much. 0 0.03, 0 0.04 from my original calibration with the other tip. So, what I will do, press and hold cal, 7.0, done deal. Rinse that off, wipe it off, pH 4, right on the money. Love it. Okay, now you also have another button. There are three buttons, on and off, calibration, and then it says degrees Celsius. You can always change, uh, push on that button to see what your current temperature is in degrees Celsius. So right now, measuring at the end of that tip, I'm reading 19.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, in Houston, we call that cold. <laughs> now let's say that you have uh, a really nasty application and you've ended up getting some gunk and some grime and, and uh, who knows what on the end of this electrode. What you can do is you can just take that tip, either one of them, slide it off, throw that in some solution to, to rinse it off in a minute, um, and then you can take, just like this, swirl that around in some good old water, Take a nice hand towel, or paper towel, paper towel is a, is a great device, and just wipe it down. It's one of the nice things about uh, our ground glass reference junction. Uh, it's a simple, easy way to uh, keep a clean junction. Uh, just a wipe, and then go back to work. Take that out of the water. Now, if you did have some gunk in there, you're probably smart blowing some air through there uh, or getting a, a test tube cleaner and you could do some cleaning that way. But it is plastic, so uh, you can be a little bit abusive. Just be careful of the O-ring. If that ever breaks, then you'll need a new O-ring. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put some more electrolyte in here. Anytime you do a clean, it's very important that you do what? That's right. It's very important that you calibrate your electrode. And I'm going to give a demonstration of the true capabilities of the CPX 105 spear tip style electrode. This, my friends, that's a pork shoulder. Now, I know that you don't sit around at the house going, you know what? I wonder what the pH is of my pork shoulder. But this particular electrode is an extremely strong glass. The glass on this electrode is extremely strong. 
it's able to pierce right into an object. Now you notice I did not hesitate in punching this into this shoulder of pork. Whether it went into the bone or the meat, I wasn't concerned about the glass. Why? Because the glass that we use is extremely strong. Uh, it is used throughout uh, Australia in the meat industry. The uh, meat industry loves the ability to uh, be able to quality control test their meat products using an instrument of this style. Now, right now what I'm measuring is a pH of just under six pH units. <clears throat> now, if I take that out, I'm going to have a little bit of grease on the end of that electrode. Uh, but I bet, if I go over here, yeah, I better not go right back into that seven buffer, huh? Go ahead and wipe that off real quick. If I go into that seven buffer, rock solid, right on 7.0. Anywhere else in the meat I want to test? That particular spot, it's at 6.3 and it's dropping. You always got to give pH electrodes about 30 seconds to really uh, get to their, their point of 90% uh, accuracy, 95% accuracy. A full minute will give you 100% in most cases, uh, but you shouldn't have to wait that long. The reality is, right now I'm measuring right at 6 pH units. That's a pretty good close representation from these two spots. Uh, in fact, we're now exactly the same. That wraps it up, folks. If you'll do me a favor, email me when you have a question. You can email us at sales at inode.com.